There we are, we're recording. So welcome to Painting Through the Pandemic. I'm Shauna Sue. I own Crooked Door Studio in Uptown Marysville, Ohio. Uh, the studio has been physically closed since mid-March last year, like almost 11 months. And we're gonna be closed a little bit longer. Um, I see sun, I see brightness on the horizon though. We'll talk about that, Anita, okay? Don't worry about phthalo green. So um, I see brightness on the horizon. Super excited, fingers crossed, maybe May, I'm hoping we'll be able to open the physical studio again for some smaller classes and maybe some parties. So have a happy thought there. Okay, let's, let's go ahead and talk about our supplies. If you don't have something that I have, don't worry about it, it'll be fine, we'll wing it. Uh, somebody uh, mentioned that, somebody just said my screen is small. Can somebody provide technical assistance in the uh, in the comments on how to help them make their screen the screen large? And I'm going to move I'm going to move forward. There's a way to to make my screen large in Zoom. If somebody could type that in the chat, I would appreciate it. Okay, so supplies. Let's go ahead and talk through it. Somebody already asked about green. Oh, my bandwidth is a little low. Is that it, Marie? happens right rural internet it happens okay is what it is right speaker view that's a good idea tracy that that makes me a little bit larger but rural internet right i'm out in the country in in uh, central ohio weird things happen okay so let's talk supplies we've had conversations through chat already about green paint. What if you don't have the same green that I have? Don't worry about it. I, I like the different greens because it gives us different shades. But if you don't have the same greens I have, we can modify those greens and get different shades by adding blue here, by adding a little yellow there. That'll get us some fun different shades of green. Okay, so let's talk about supplies. Okay. First things first, we're all painting at home. So take a moment and look around. Make sure there's nothing around you that you're super concerned if you were to get paint on it. The paint that I'm using, and probably the paint you're using, is acrylic paint. It's water based, water soluble. You get it on your clothing and it dries. It's a real bear to get out. If you get it on fabric, so make sure if you're standing on a nice rug, roll that up out the way. Um, it's really easy when we're painting to flick off the edge of a canvas, not even know we've done it till later. So just take a moment and look around. Um, also make sure you have an old shirt on, an apron, something to, to protect you from getting paint on your clothing. Okay, so there's that. Um, Tonight, I'm using a 16 by, I say that as if I use different things. No, I always use a 16 by 20 stretch. Our inspiration painting, uh, we'll talk about that in just a minute, but I think it lends to vertical, right? It's like a treehouse type, type painting, and we're going to want those really tall, tall trees there, some nice uh, trees in the distance in the background. But if you want to do yours horizontally, that's fine. It's entirely up to you. This is your night, right? You make it what you want it to be, okay? And if you want to paint horizontally, that's what you do, okay? So I'm using 16 by 20 stretched. If you have a stretched canvas, it's always lovely if you paint the edges too. If you wrap your paint all the way around, and paint the edges. Gives it a nice finished look. And then you don't have to frame it. You don't have to do anything else with it when you're done, okay? You don't have to paint the edges, but you don't wanna start painting them and then stop. That looks messy and unfinished. So either paint the edges or not, there's no real in-between there, okay? So apron, paint shirt, canvas. I have a cup of, um, cool water, it's about halfway full. I like to use a mason jar or a coffee cup, something that's nice and heavy. I'm less likely to knock it over. 
Um, I like solo cups because they're disposable, but the lightweight, I'm really good at knocking stuff over. So this just goes in my, in my bag. Remember, cool or cold, never warm or hot water. Warm or hot water does something funky to the paint, okay? So cool or cold. I've got some paper towels there underneath it to blot my brushes on. Let's talk about brushes. So here's what we have for tonight. I have my big fat background brush, just something that's gonna, it's big, it's gonna hold a lot of paint. I'm gonna do some fun textural things in the background with this big brush. So I've got my big background brush medium brush, any kind of medium. I'm using a medium filbert. This one's in number 10. Yours might be a little bigger, a little smaller. Yours might be flat and not a filbert. It's okay. Get something medium. And then a nice, a nice pointy brush. This one is a number five. Yours might be a different number. What you want is just to make sure you can do some fine detail work, right? We've got those lights that are on there and the lines on the, on the tree house. So you wanna make sure you have a nice pointy brush to work with. So I have those three. I have another medium brush, a medium filbert that's a little smaller than the other one, just because, I don't know, I might need it, I might not. Those brushes, though all those that I've just mentioned, I'm gonna take those and put them in my water cup and leave them there, okay? That keeps them from getting dried out halfway through class. Um, and having dried out paint left in them, keeps them nice and soft. Um, so there's that. I'm gonna take them and leave them. I don't know what else I was gonna say, but I'm gonna take them and leave them in my water cup. The one I am not putting in my water cup is my fan brush. You may or may not have a fan brush tonight. That's okay. You can do the trees in this without a fan brush. But if you do have a fan brush, I am not gonna put him in the water cup. I wanna use a fan brush dry. If I start with a wet fan brush, the bristles tend to, um, well, they get really soft and then they chunk and they turn into fingers. And instead of being a nice, pretty fan, right? They'll tend to separate and you'll get like polka dots and not, not really the look we're going for. So I'm not gonna put him in the water cup till I'm done with him. I'm just gonna lay him on that paper towel dry. Uh, something else you might have in your bag, something I certainly keep in my bag, I say it every week, paint pen, because I think every artist should sign their painting. And I am really bad at signing with a brush, truth be told. So I have a paint pen to sign my paintings with, just much easier for me. You may or may not have it and that's okay. Okay, let's talk to me. Okay, so here's my paint palette tonight. My white got a little out of control, but that's okay. Okay, so I have white, block out white. Um, a friend asked me earlier the difference between block out white and titanium white. They're essentially the same. Um, block out white is a little bit heavier. It's a little thicker it's less transparent, it's, it's more solid, it's more opaque. I like, titanium white will, will do fine. I like block out white because the paint we're using is student grade paint. Student grade paint by nature is really inexpensive. We can buy it by the bucket load. It's lots of fun to learn with, but it's very transparent because the manufacturers thin it down to make it go further. So it makes it more see-through, makes it more transparent. By using block out white, for example, with yellow, it'll be nice and bright and solid. The yellow by itself is gonna be really transparent, really see-through. But if we add block out white to it, it adds some weight to it. It makes it heavier, makes it more solid to go over top of other colors, okay? So that's the difference between block out and titanium. So I have block out white. I have bright yellow, might be chrome yellow, but anyway, just a nice bright yellow. Phthalo blue, any blue will do. We're probably not even gonna use that much of it, but we have it just in case. 
And then my greens, I have phthalo green and green oxide. Phthalo green is very almost turquoise. It's got a lot of blue in it. Green oxide is much warmer. It's a much warmer green. This painting has a lot of different shades of green back there. And I think by using both of these greens, little blue, little yellow, little white, we'll be able to get so many fun shades of, of trees and greenery in that background. But if you don't have those greens, don't worry about it, right? It'll be okay. And then I have brown, I'm using burnt umber for my, for my tree house and my pathway and then Mars Black. Okay, so those are my colors I have. So before we get started painting, let me pull up our inspiration picture here. And let's talk about how we're gonna go through this. Okay, here's our inspiration picture. This is where I tell you, this is not mine. This is from another artist, something we found that we liked that we wanna try to duplicate and this is a great way to learn, is to look and see what other artists have done and try to copy that to learn different things. Okay, so this is our inspiration painting. And you can see all those beautiful different shades of green back there. Okay, so the way we're gonna do this, we're gonna start top down and we're gonna cover that whole canvas. We're gonna start very light, and then we're gonna get into some greeny blues. And then about halfway down, we're gonna start to get dark, 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 dark greens, maybe even some dark blue down in there, okay? And then we're gonna lay some trees in. And then we're gonna map out where our, where our tree house and where our walkway lives. And then we'll finish with some details. We'll put the windows in our tree house, we'll put the lights on. This one has a couple strings of lights across it. I love that. It's like this little tree house just tucked in the, tucked in the forest. So that's the direction we're gonna go. So I say we go ahead and get started. Marie, 715. It's weird, it's creepy, I know. Marie and I had this conversation. It's, it's 715 every time. I can talk for exactly 15 minutes. Okay. Let's get started. So again, we're going to start top down. This is the point where you're going to want to paint the edges if you have decided to paint your edges. So let's start light up. So if you have new brushes or old brushes, doesn't matter, pop them, pop them in your water cup. And before you use a brush, you're going to tap, tap, tap in the bottom of the cup. Old brushes, this will soften them up a little bit because my brushes get a little stiff where a little bit of paint residue is left in them. If you have new brushes, you wanna tap them gently in that water because new brushes, when they come from the factory, they come with like a starch on the bristles to hold them stiff and shifting. And you wanna clean them a little and get that, get that starch out of there, okay? So let's start with that big brush and we're gonna start top down. So big brush, tap, tap, tap. Let's dry it off on our, on our paper towel. Push the water out of it. Now, anytime you take paint, we always go in the edge of the puddle, never the middle. I don't wanna mess everything up in that puddle. I wanna be able to use from the different sides to get clean color, okay? So, excuse me, I'm gonna take, I got some messy with my white here. So I'm gonna take this white, a lot of white, and I think I'm gonna take the tiny, tiny, tiniest bit of blue. Tiny, tiny bit. That phthalo blue is powerful. Tiny bit is gonna go a long way. And let's start with that nice, bright, lovely blue sky. I'm gonna go down about a big fat hand with. If you have decided that you're going to paint your edges, now's the time, get on up there. With that top edge. Wrap that color around those sides as you go. It's easier to do it as you go than it is to try to match them up later. Okay, so if you're gonna paint your edges, now's the time. 
Okay, white, tiny bit of blue, going down about a fat hand width. In looking at the um, our original picture, the inspiration, that top looks gray. I wasn't feeling gray. I, I felt like it needed to be blue. Light blue, but blue nonetheless. Okay, again, about a big fat hand width, probably about a quarter of the way down. If we're looking at the size, if you're using a different size canvas, let's go about a quarter of the way down. And this is where I remind everybody to breathe. Let the, uh, let the past week go. It was a rough one for me. I don't know about you, but it was a rough one for me. So this is my time to just let it go. Just focus on the paint. If you go further than a quarter of the way, that's okay. There's no right or wrong here. I'm gonna give you a few more minutes to do that. I am not putting my brush in my water cup. I'm gonna hang on to it. There's no need to rinse it out yet. Oh, Kim, I love seeing you paint and I see you're doing like full body painting. I can see your entire body moving back and forth as you paint. It's the best, isn't it? To just go with it. <laughs> and I see a lot of you sitting. I see some of you standing. Mad props to those of you that can sit and paint. I can't sit and paint. Gotta stand. It's probably because I use my full body when I paint. Okay, so another minute or so. Again, I'm just hanging onto that brush. No need to rinse it out. If you did, that's okay, but no need to rinse it out yet. I always remind you guys to breathe. I found myself just now holding my breath. <sighs> Let it out. Been doing that a lot lately. Hold my breath and not knowing it. To Let it out. <sighs> okay. So let's get ready and head on down the canvas. Now, if you look at the original, it appears as though we're, we're in the forest and there are trees that are way off in the distance, but they're very, very faded, right? It's almost like there's a mist back there beyond the tree house. They're very, very faded. So I'm gonna continue with my big brush, but I'm gonna change my brush stroke. And I'm gonna go very messy, lots of paint, but I'm gonna start doing vertical swipes, like vertical upside down Vs. Let me show you. I'm going to use, again, I haven't rinsed my brush out. So white, maybe a tiny bit of blue. And maybe the tiniest bit of green. Whatever green you have, I think I'm going to use phthalo. And I do mean tiny, tiny, tiny. And for the next half of my, or the next quarter of my painting, so down to about a half, I'm going to start doing these fun vertical, vertical brush strokes. Oh, I might add in a little bit of that, that oxide. 
So white, blue. This is, if we paint it this way, this is gonna make it easier when we go to put some defined treetops in later. So let me show you again. A lot of white because it's off in the distance. Maybe a tiny bit of blue. Maybe a tiny, tiny bit of one of these greens, whichever one makes you happy. And I'm using my brush skinny ways, not using it fat ways anymore. I'm using skinny ways and I'm pulling down. They're overlapping, they're very messy. Maybe it comes up a little higher over here. Maybe it comes back down over here. Okay, let's do that till we're about halfway down. Your challenge here is to stay random. Don't put them all in a row. I see I'm getting kind of a row here. So I'm gonna break it up a little bit. So jump around, try to keep them uneven. I might want to go a little higher. We're going to go down to about halfway. White, tiny blue, tiny green. I think I'm doing it subconsciously, but as I move down, I'm starting to use a little less white, starting to get a little darker because I know my next step, once I've reached halfway, my next step is to go the rest of the way down and get it darker. So I, I didn't realize I was doing it until I looked at it and I was like, oh yeah, I am getting a little darker as I go. Ooh, all those different colors are lovely. Now, if you only have one green, you could add a little bit of yellow. I wouldn't be afraid of that. Just a little bit because green and yellow will give you this lovely limey color. Experiment back in there, right? There's no right or wrong, play around. Right now we're just getting that fun texture in the background, right? This is gonna have um, my, my uh, tree house. My tree house is gonna be really big. It's gonna cover a lot of this, but we still want that fun texture back there. <laughs> and then we're gonna once we've reached about halfway that's about our horizon line we're gonna keep going the rest of the way down using that same brush stroke but very little white. We want it to get nice and dark now. So 
So I'm going to use phthalo green. I'm just using the mess I have in my brush, but I'm just adding phthalo green and green oxide. And by making it darker down here, that's going to set my painting down. Oh, edges, almost forgot. Don't forget your edges. So again, green oxide, phthalo green. I might add a little yellow just to make it more interesting, just a little bit. This is where I absolutely love old brushes. This brush is old. It's, I don't even know how old it is, probably three years old. It's seen a lot of action, but because it's older, it has dried paint up toward the bezel. And that makes the bristles splay out a little bit. New brushes are nice and tight. This one's a little older, so it's all splayed out. That means it's gonna hold a lot of paint. So I'm, I'm getting some really cool texture back in here because I have so much paint in my brush. So let's keep going. By the time we're done with this step, our whole canvas will be covered. Not worried about a blow dryer, okay? Because we're gonna go in and we're gonna play play back in here and um, define some of those treetops next. So I'm okay if this is wet when we move on. So to be respectful of everyone's time, let's go until 7.45 and then I'll check in and see if, see if we need to wait another five minutes. I like that little bit of yellow in there. That's fun. Remember, you want to have all these lovely different shades. So play in your green. Add a tiny bit of white if you, if you need to, if you want to. But I think the trick down here is to get paint on there and then move on. Don't blend it into oblivion until it's all one color. Let those different shades shine through. If you keep going over and over and over a spot, you're gonna lose, you're gonna blend it all together and lose all those beautiful shades of green. So while we're painting, I want to just point out that I have listed out in the Zoom chat, um, if you feel so compelled, if you wanted to donate to the studio, there's information there on how to um, donate through PayPal or through uh, Venmo. There's also the address for the studio if you wanted to mail a check. Thank you so much to everyone that has done that. You're helping me uh, pay the studio rent. So the, uh, the physical space will still be there when we're ready to open back up. And if you're joining us late, fingers crossed, May. 
fingers crossed. As long as COVID doesn't take some weird detour and flare back up again violently. I feel we'll have enough, enough people vaccinated by then. which if you know someone in public health right now, reach out to them. They are not okay. It's been a struggle. So if you have a, if you have a friend in public health, reach out and check on them. So good Lord, we are in a position we never thought we'd be in. Okay. Ooh, we love all those different shades of green. So again, 7.45. I'll check and see at that point if we're ready to move on or if we need another five minutes. Make sure if you're painting your edges, make sure you've got them. And when my whole canvas is covered, I think I can uh, I can pop my brush in my water cup, that big brush, because we're going to move on to a medium brush next. When I uh, when I paint, I'm always looking like three steps forward, I'm like where do I want my my treehouse to land? I think the bottom of my tree house is going to be real close to halfway. So it's going to be about the break between the light background trees and these darker foregrounds, foreground trees. So I'll have the base of my tree house here. The peak of it will come up here. And then we'll have that lovely walk that lovely uh, suspended bridge wall. Oh goodness, I see the comment, how are my chickens? So let's see chicken story while you guys are painting. Um, let's see, Phyllis, oh drama. Oh, Phyllis is so full of drama. So for those of you that don't know, I have, we have 27 chickens. Um, we have 25 hens, laying hens. And then we have two roosters. We have George and Betty. Thought Betty was a girl, Betty's not a girl, but once you're Betty, you're Betty, right? So we have Betty and George. Two roosters is not advisable, but because George is older, Betty has continued to just like fall in line. So if Betty gets out of line, George will kick him back in play, kick him back in line, and then he just backs right down. So thankfully, um, Betty is very submissive. So that's the only reason two roosters have worked out. We had three roosters and um, Laverne, which became Vern, Vern had to go live with another family. Thankfully, Vern was, um, a lavender Orpington. So he was like a sought after rooster. So it wasn't hard to find him a home. Thank goodness. Cause he couldn't stay. He was getting real cocky. So anyway, um, so we have 27 chickens and we have all different kinds. There's so much fun to have all the different chickens. When we got, um, our ladies last spring, we got a rainbow assorted pack and we had no idea what we were getting. They were all just random, but guaranteed to lay different colored eggs. In that rainbow assortment was Phyllis, sweet Phyllis. Her name is Phyllis after Phyllis Diller because she has this giant blonde hairdo. Makes my husband crazy when I call it hair, but 
these feathers, just this ridiculous big feather cap. You can't see her eyes most of the time because her feathers are so huge. She bumps into stuff. She's 15 levels of ridiculous. But um, Phyllis gives zero Fs about anyone, right? Phyllis does what she's gonna do. She carries on, she's pretty special. And I love her for that. So Tuesday morning, we went over to check. Phyllis had, um, Phyllis was a little sick for a while. So we took her and we put her in, um, in sick bay like a dog kennel that's in the chicken coop to keep her away from everybody else so they don't pick on her to make sure she's okay to make sure she doesn't spread anything to anybody else but she can still see everybody else so we <laughs> made phyllis in sick bay we went over tuesday morning to check on her before we headed off to work and when i opened the coop door phyllis in her coop in her um in her pen blood everywhere she was she was sitting there looking at me. She was alive, but there was blood everywhere. It looked like, I think I told, I posted on Facebook, it looked like a Quentin Tarantino movie because of his overuse of fake blood in all his movies. So anyway, it was like a murder scene. Phyllis had blood all over her face. She had blood all over her body. I was like, oh dear God, what has happened? So we scooped her up, brought her in the house, got her in the um got her in the sink so we could bathe her so we could figure out what was going on because she's by herself she somehow evidently i didn't know this i'm a new new chicken mama feathers bleed she had somehow pulled part of a feather out and it bled like a scalp wound one feather blood everywhere and i think she was trying to clean herself up and was trying to clean that feather, which then she ended up with blood all over her face. So it wasn't bad, but oh man, it looked, it looked rough. So got her all cleaned up, got her feather taken care of. She's back with everybody else now, but that's the level of drama that Phyllis brings to the table. She's pretty special. And when we had her in the sink, she sat in the sink in, in a warm bath and just sang and talked and she surfed the internet on my phone. Oh, Phyllis. So anyway, everybody else is good. Uh, Phyllis is, she's fine. She had that one feather. <sighs> drama, drama, drama. Um, this morning when I went to check on them, we have about five minutes, by the way, five minutes and I'll check in to see if we're ready to move on. Um, so if you don't wanna hear chicken, chicken stories, you could um, go get a beverage, grab a snack, about five minutes, I'll check in and see if we're ready to move on. So I went over to check on the chickens this morning to take them food and make sure their water wasn't frozen because it's so cold, all that stuff. And there was a ruckus in the coop. Girls were screaming. I was like, what is happening? Evidently, Tweeter, her name is Tweeter because she her feathers, she looks like she's wearing a tweed coat, a tweed jacket, like a men's tweed jacket. She's very fancy. She was in the box trying to lay, lay an egg. And there were three other girls that evidently wanted in that box. We have eight boxes. They didn't all need to be in that one box that she was in, but they wanted her out of there so they could get in that box. And they were just talking up a storm, just giving her what for. So I, they're special, but they're so much fun. If you think you might want chickens, reach out to me. I will tell you whatever I know about them, but they're so much fun and their eggs are beautiful and they're so good. There's nothing like farm fresh eggs. So that was a long answer to a really short question. How's your chickens? Oh, let me tell you. I will tell you all about my chickens. Oh my goodness. They're so much fun. I, Dusty, Phyllis is, is the crowd favorite. Dusty, I think is my, she's my favorite. She's a partridge coachin. So she has, um, she has a big feathered rump and she has feathered legs and feathered feet. So the other chickens, when they run, they run. Dusty, my partridge coachin, because of her feathered rump and her feathered legs and feet, when she runs, she runs like she's a whole party when she runs. 
<laughs> she just makes me smile. Uh, but in the evening, when I go to shut down the coop, Dusty will come over. And if I put my hand out, she'll hop in my, hop in my hand. And then she'll, she'll stay with me while I do a head count and make sure everybody's in and everything's secured for the night. Oh, they're so fun. Okay, about another two minutes. So if you need to go to the potty, now's the time. Oh, Andrea, how's Flash? You'll have to let me know in the comments. Flash okay? Oh, good, good, good. I worried about him. Oh. <laughs> you know angry is good I guess right <laughs> whenever no trees whenever whenever girl gets angry about something I think well at least she has spunk <laughs> oh okay I say we go ahead and move on can you flail your arms wildly if you're not ready Do I see flailing? Okay, I see a little bit of flailing. So we'll give it another five minutes and then 7.50, we're gonna move on. And that's, that's nice because that's giving this some time to dry. It doesn't need to be dry, but it's giving it a little, a little time to dry and set before we move on. Poor Flash, no treats, that's rough. Oh, oh, I totally would have brought him home, right? That was the hardest thing on the planet when we, Gert had back surgery two years ago and we had to leave her at the vet for like three days. I was a wreck. Yeah, I'm a firm believer. I think they, I think they recuperate better at home than they do. I mean, if you have the ability to bring them home, Gert couldn't come home uh, because she had major back surgery and she was on IVs and all kinds of pain meds. So they needed to monitor her there, but I think they recover a lot better the faster you can get them home. All right, Emily, since we have about four minutes, what, uh, what are you eating? What's for dinner? <gasps> Ooh, so I made a big pot of chili last weekend and I think I'm gonna have my last bowl tonight for dinner. And near the end of the pot, that's when it's the best. Oh, absolutely, Andrea. Absolutely. It's a fur baby. So now I'm curious for those of you that are done and you're, we're waiting our, our final three minutes to move on. What do you put in your chili? I'm curious. I was raised to eat chili a certain way and I'm not gonna say it until I see what some of the rest of you put in your chili. Like when you're scooping it into a bowl to eat it, what do you, what do you put in it? 
Oh, that's different. Okay. I wouldn't have thought peanut butter sandwich. Interesting. Ooh, cheese and sour cream. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Ooh, rice is good. Saltines, scoops, onions, Lynn, so many onions. Cheese. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So hear me out on this. I was raised in a house, cottage cheese, a big old, ooh, cornbread's good. A big old scoop of cottage cheese. And people are always like, ooh, like, no, no, you put, it is good, Emily. You put cottage cheese in lasagna, right? When you make your, when you make your lasagna homemade, it's no different. Yeah. I, I was raised in that house with cottage cheese in my chili and I can't eat chili without cottage cheese. <laughs> I'm so broken. Oh, peanut butter sandwiches. That's interesting. I've, I've never heard of that, but now two of you have said that tonight. Peanut butter sandwich with chili. Interesting. Oh, crushed crackers. Yeah. My husband does that. He puts some, um, he puts a ton of saltine crackers and they have to be the cheap saltine crackers. Those are the best, right? Not the expensive saltine crackers. The ones that are like 39 cents, the cheap ones. Cheap ones are the best ones. They really are. I mean, there's a time for good crackers like club crackers or Ritz. But man, those cheap saltines, they're so good with chili. Okay, so it's about 10 till I say we go ahead and move on, okay? If your canvas is still wet, that's fine. Oh, but see, Andrea, that's the best. That's what I'm talking about. They should taste like cardboard with salt, as long as there's salt on them. Those are the best. They should be very questionable. They should be like flour and water. Okay, so if we look, let's, let's move on. If we look at the original and we look way off here in the distance, you can see way, way back, like the tops of some of those trees. They don't go all the way down, just the tops of some of them. And then along the horizon line, where our light transitioned into our dark, you can see some trees back there that are a little more full that sit on the horizon line. Let's go ahead and work on some of those. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna start with some of these that are way off here in the distance in the very light part. I'm gonna use my medium brush, whatever kind of a medium brush you have. You can use whatever you have, might be flat, might be angled, might be a filbert. I'm gonna use it vertically. And I'm gonna find this color and go just a tiny, tiny bit darker. So what was that color? That was white and tiny blue, tiny, tiny greens. And I wanna go just a little bit darker than the color that is there. And let's put like, I don't know, half a dozen or so that, that are different heights. They only come down like halfway. Use that brush vertically. What if I put one here? So I'm gonna pull down to the left, right, left, right, left, right. Use a lot of paint on your brush. You go a little darker so you can see what I'm doing. So white, blue, blue, green, get in here. And what if I put one right here? Vertical, pull down. And it just kind of fades off into, into nothing. Okay. So white. Green, green. Again, these should be just a little bit darker than what's back here. 
and I'm using a lot of paint. Kind of accentuating some of those V's that we already have on there that we created when we put the background in. I might even add a little bit of yellow. I know I didn't use yellow uh, for this light section, but I think I think I might right now for some of those treetops. Just the caps. I am so excited about my chili for dinner tonight. Y'all don't even know. Because again, it's it's that last bowl. Oh, it's been it's been sitting for a while. It's gonna be good. So, like everything else that we've done so far, keep it random, right? I put three of them here, pretty close together, different heights. Right now I'm working on the ones that just kind of disappear. Then I'm gonna come in and put some right here along this horizon line. And this is where we remind ourselves, this is all in the background. In the grand scheme of things, nobody's gonna pay a whole lot of attention to that when it's all done. It's all, it's all going to be about that uh, tree house, right? So if you're not sure you like what's going on back here, don't worry about it. Just get a little texture in there and we'll move on. Really like that. That's fun. Okay. So I have just some of those those peaks in there that are off in the distance. I want to put some right here um, at the, the top of this dark green that are a little darker, a little more defined. I don't think I'm going to have to do much back in here because of the way I put my background on. I already have some defined peaks there. And that's our goal is to just get all these lovely different shades of green happening down in there. Ooh, that one I added a little yellow and white. Made it pop a little bit. So we're working on all this fun background stuff. I'm not worried about the, there's like a nice big, big dark tree, a couple big trees on this left side. And there's a couple big trees on this right side. Not worried about those yet. I think I'm gonna go ahead and map out where my tree house is gonna go next. And while that's drying, 
then I'll put those big trees in. So right now it's just it's just those background trees. Trying to decide if I want a couple more up here. I think I will. Why not? Right? What the heck? If I could give you any guidance at this point, it would be messy. This is all very messy. But we're reminding ourselves that this is all in the background. This is all just adding texture. This is not the, um, this is not the focal point of our painting, right? It's all just fun things happening in the background. Our focal point is going to be that tree house right in the middle. And also, we don't judge a painting halfway through, right? So if you're doing this and you're like, what is happening? Don't stress too much about it. Ooh, I'm putting some really light tree tops to go up into the blue a little bit. That's fun. They're real light. Using a lot of white with them. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move on because we're going to want the next step. We're going to want our treehouse to dry a little bit. So we'll have time to go and add more texture in there later if we feel like we need it. Okay, but I'm going to go ahead and stop with what I'm doing and I'm going to put my treehouse in next. Now, do you remember we talked earlier about all our paint is very transparent? It's because it's student grade paint, it's very transparent. So I wanna put brown on there for my treat house, but if I put just brown on there, it's gonna be very streaky and very, um, you're gonna see the tree texture through it. So I need to give that tree house a solid base to live upon. So we're going to have to do this in stages. So when I want a solid base for something to live on, I can either do it in white first because our block out white is solid or black. By looking at this, at this painting, this tree house, I'm going to do this in black first. It's um, that brown is really dark, has a lot of depth to it. I think by doing it in black first, that's gonna give us the look that we need, okay? So my tree house, the bottom of it, is gonna live about halfway on my paint. This is the bottom of it, right? It's gonna come up and to a peak. My guidance is start small. You can always make it bigger but I'm gonna use um, my medium brush that I was just using for my trees. Clean the green out of it, dry it off. And now with just black, let's get that strong black base on there. 
with just black and my medium brush, clean out, dry it off. Let's put a solid line here that's right about halfway. Halfway up and down, halfway vertically on my paint. And I might have to step in front to get this straight because I have a tendency to paint down downhill. Here we go. Again, start small. You can always make it bigger if you feel like it's too tiny. But once it's too big, it's hard to go back from that. I think I'm going to start with a rectangle. Then I'm going to give it a, a, a peak roof. My middle. Right there. Something like that. And I'm going to fill it all in in black. Again, we're giving it that, that solid base for the brown to live on once that black is dry. Because that brown by nature is just too weak. Now, if you're picking up some green, if you're picking up a little bit of your background that was still wet, that's okay. That is all right. This doesn't have to be solid black. If you pick up a little green, a little white back there, that's all right. And again, like I said, we're starting small. Once you get this filled in, Take a step back and look and decide, ooh, does it need to be bigger? I think I might wait and make that decision till after I get my, my walkway on. And anytime I put a base on, like I'm like I'm doing with this for the brown to live upon, I'm going to make sure I don't have any big globs of paint that are going to take a long time to dry. Okay, something that when I put the brown on there, that if I were to drag through it, I would accidentally um, drag through wet black paint that was taking forever to dry. So make sure you're smoothing your black paint out. You're not leaving any big rolls of paint on there. Okay. okay. Got my tree house on there. I'm going to do the same thing with the uh, with the pathway, right with the bridge. So the door is if we split the cabin in thirds, the tree house in thirds. That walkway appears to be the middle third. and it comes all the way to the bottom. And for perspective, I'm gonna start by going straight to the bottom. And again, I apologize, I'm gonna to have to step in front so I can get straight lines. Give me just a moment. Okay, sorry about that. So I just went straight down, but now for perspective, I want it to be a little bit wider down here. So I'm going to come down and I'm going to start to come out a little bit. It's 
See, I'm making it a little wider there at the bottom for perspective. And I'm going to just like the tree house, I'm going to fill it in in black. that in. Again, smoothing out any paint boogers I might have there. Rolls of paint. There we go. When you've come this far, step back and decide. Is your tree house big enough? I feel like I might bring mine out about a finger width on this side, a finger width on the left, and a finger width on the right. I feel like I want it a little bit wider. This is where we get into trouble though, right? A little bit wider, then gets a little more wider, a little more wider. Before I know it, I have a ginormous tree house. But I really do feel like I want it to be just, just the width of my brush wider. So I'm gonna take small bites here. So it doesn't get out of control too fast. There we go. Okay. So I'll give you another, another few minutes on that. I'm not gonna rinse this brush out because I wanna put those, um, what are we gonna call those? Those uprights for the handrail on this on this bridge. I'm gonna do those in black next. And and let me remind you if you get to the point that you think I'm moving too fast or things just aren't working out the way you think they should and you're getting frustrated, remember art like this shouldn't be frustrating. Art can be, it should be fun, it should be relaxing sometimes challenging and that's okay but if you're getting frustrated it's time to put your brushes down and walk away because when you try to force it, it doesn't work right you just gotta let it flow so remember i'm going to post the recording okay as soon as class is over so like 905 I'll uh, have the recording posted and then you can go and forward to the place where where you had to had to pause Okay. But in the interest of time, you got to keep going. Okay. So now, I think what I want to do, I think the way I want to tackle this, I think I'm actually going to go to a smaller brush first. I think I'm, I'm going to go to my pointy brush and put the connector in first, the uh, connector wire. Because if we look at the painting, if we look at the original, 
that connector wire that connects those posts, it starts here, right around the doorway. And they come down and they swoop down close to the corner of the painting. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I have my pointy brush with black. And I'm gonna start right here, right where my walkway connects to my building. And I'm gonna come down and swoop it to the corner. Whew, that's tough. Okay. That's helping add really cool perspective too, right? It's wider and then it leads your eye right into this doorway. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side. Start right here where the bridge connects to the bottom of the, the building. And I'm gonna come down and swoop out to the corner. And I think those are the ones, if you look at the, the finished picture, those are the ones that appear to have like white twinkle lights on them when it's all said and done. So I think, I think we need to do another set that comes down and, and lands between the one we just put on and the walkway. So let's do another one. Starts here at the same place, comes down and swoops and lands about halfway. Halfway between the top rail and the walkway. Same thing over here. There we go. Whew. All right. Okay. And now we need to go on and put those, um, put the upright posts on that, on the bridge. Feels kind of backwards the way we've done this. We would normally put those posts in and then put the wires in between the posts. But this one to get the right perspective, it made sense to do those wires first. And now we'll do the posts um, back over top of those wires. And as we put those in, I'm gonna use my medium brush, just black. They're gonna be, they're gonna be bigger. And then they're gonna get smaller, smaller as we get close to the tree house. So let's go ahead and do that. And they're, they're in black. And when I do something like this, I love to use, um, I'll use the same brush, even though they're bigger down here and they get smaller, I'm gonna use this medium brush and where they're bigger, I'll use my brush flat ways. And then as they get smaller, I'll turn it and use it skinny ways. Or you can transition to a smaller brush if you want, that's up to you. Okay, so brush. Let's see, looks like I have one down here that doesn't even connect. It's out of the picture where it connects to my walkway. Right here. And then I have one 
it's the same angle that connects right here where the walkway goes off the goes off the canvas. And they're going to start to get a little smaller. Again, this is just in black. At this point, I'm going to turn that brush skinny ways so I can get some smaller ones up here. Okay, there's one side, we'll get the other side. Whoo! Okay. Oh my goodness. That was stressful. Take a breather. Okay, so once we have that all done in black, we're going to let that black dry. Okay. Okay, so I'll give you a few a few more minutes to work on that. Get those those posts in there. And while we're letting that black dry, once those posts are in, I say we go back in and we play in the trees a little more. If you have a fan brush, we'll play with that fan brush a little bit. Um, Marie, I feel like this needs to be our spring, our spring trip. I think I very much feel that. Mohican, I think. I think up around Mansfield, up around Mohican. Okay, so we're gonna, in the interest of time, again, gonna keep moving. We're gonna give this black some time to dry. And let's go and play in these trees a little more. I feel like I want, I wanna use my fan brush. If you don't have a fan brush, no worries. You can use your big brush, but just use it flat ways. <laughs> so true. So true, Marie, we'd have to carry them. They would never walk across that bridge. Okay, Sarah Wood on her hands and knees. 
Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and put some using my fan brush. I'm just going to work on some more texture back in there in those trees. So I have my dry fan brush. I'm going to play in these greens. I'm going to load this fan brush up. I'm going to use it vertically first and put my backbone in. And then I have a lot of, lot of paint on there. Remember these trees, they're tiny at the top and then they get bigger as you go down. And just tap, tap, tap and back and forth. He's going to come down here into this dark and just kind of disappear into no man's land. He just kind of fades off into nothing down there. Oh, that's fun. I like him. Let me do that again. Maybe this time I'm going to use that same fan brush, not clean it out. Maybe this time I use more of this uh, green oxide. Or if you don't have green oxide, if you don't have one of these greens, what if you add a little, little bit of yellow, a little bit of white? Let me show you up close. My fan brush. So skinny first, let's get a backbone in there first. And then leave that little, little top that's where you put the star on the Christmas tree. And then I'm gonna use the edge of it to start, giving little taps, tap, 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 tap. Back and forth. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. I've seen people when they do, um, when they're learning these trees, they'll come down and they'll go left and right and left and right. And that's, that's not it. I'm tapping about five times going back and forth. One, two, three, four, five. 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 And then again, just disappears down into no man's land down in there. I'm going to do one of those with, with my, um, with a filbert. So if you don't have a fan brush, you can use a regular brush. So I have a regular brush. I got one that's a little newer. Um, so I could get this nice, this nice tight edge. My old big brush would give me polka dots of paint because it, the bristles are splayed out. But this one, he's still all nice and tight. I can use him like a fan brush. Okay, so I'm gonna clean him out and dry him off. I'll load him up with paint. I'm using skinny ways and put a backbone in. So maybe right here, very light pressure. Get nice and close. Okay, using him like perpendicular to the canvas to start. So up here at the top, I'm gonna give a little tap, 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 tap. I'm not hardly bending those bristles at all. Again, he just comes down in here into no man's land and just kind of disappears. It's fun. That gives me a different looking pine tree, right? Go back to my fan brush. Um, I just got a shipment of fan brushes. If you need one, let me know. 
oh, I haven't talked about supplies at the studio. I do have supplies at the studio. I have a supply cabinet. So if you ever need supplies, let me know. Deadline for Saturday's class is four o'clock on Friday. And I know a lot of people have a hard time um, finding a good fan brush. I have fan brushes. They're $5 a piece. I like them because they're, the bristles are really coarse. Um, they hold up to a lot of pouncing, right? A lot of fan brushes, you get the bristles are too soft. The ones I have, they're nice and coarse. Makes them really good for trees. So if you need, if you need supplies, let me know. Another one in here. Maybe a little yellow this time. Okay. Just kind of playing with my fan brush down here, and and a little texture down in the bottom. They're not even really attached to trees, just adding some texture, just tapping, playing. Okay, I think we're getting to the point where we're ready to start putting the brown on our, um, on our tree house. How about, I'm gonna give you how about five minutes. That way, if you need to run to the blow dryer, you can. So it's 8.30, how about 8.35? We'll come in and we'll work on putting the brown on the tree house, the brown on the path. We'll get those lights on there, okay? So 8.35. We'll be ready to come back and finish strong. Marie, I can imagine us giving them piggyback rides now. Carrying them across in slings and blindfolded. I do believe that's where I want to spend our birthday, though. Oh, I just realized we have 37 friends on here tonight. That's awesome. I kind of anticipated this would be a smaller class, but 37, it's pretty darn good. Thanks for joining us tonight. What haven't we talked about that we usually talk about? Let's see, we covered food, covered chickens, we did a puppy check-in. Hmm, that's what I know, that's what I know tonight. Talked about when the studio will hopefully open. May, fingers crossed. <gasps> Ooh, that's a good one, Andrea. Um, but I haven't asked that tonight because I think Tracy wins. So who's the furthest away? I think Tracy wins because she's in Guatemala. Anybody further than Guatemala from Central Ohio? Who's, uh, who's furthest in the US? 
Anybody outside Ohio? Oh, Anita is, that's right. Anita's in Maryland, right? Yes, Anita's in Maryland. All right, anybody further away than Maryland? Oh, Connecticut? Oh, and you're right, who has the best and worst weather? Oh. Um, let's see, if I would continue. Oh yeah, oh, Canada. Welcome. Welcome to our friends up north. Um, somebody just asked if I will continue to do these online even after the studio opens. The answer is yes. Yep, I will continue to do these online. They, we may transition to Friday night. I'm not sure. The normal studio schedule pre-COVID was public classes on Friday nights. Um, and my plan is to have my camera mounted so I'll have people in class and have my camera mounted up here so I can talk to you guys, but I can also interact with class at the same time. Um, but I don't know if I'm gonna go Friday nights or Saturday nights to be determined, but yes. I should probably take a poll when it gets a little closer to May to see what people would prefer Fridays or Saturdays. I usually end up doing private or yeah, private parties on Saturdays. We'll see, but yes, we'll continue. Canada, that's exciting. So Connecticut and Maryland in the US. Nobody out West tonight, huh? We had some friends from Seattle for a while. Okay, so we're gonna get ready and move on, okay? And this is your last call to make sure that black is dry. You know, if it's not super dry, I guess I'm not real concerned about it. If you get a little bit of black in that brown, that'd be okay. But if it's still super wet, you're gonna wanna blow dry before you do this next step. So we talked about our brown being very transparent. That's why we've given it this solid base. So find a brush that makes you happy. I think I'm gonna use my, my medium brush. I feel like I have better control with it than I would with a big brush with this, okay? And let's do a little, uh, let's do a little experiment here. If I just use brown, right, my medium brush with brown, and I want this to look a little log cabin-ish, so I'm gonna go sideways. That's nice, but it's still pretty transparent. I can add, I can take brown and the tiniest bit of white, tiny, 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 tiny bit, and look at that, look at the difference that makes. It makes it nice and bright. Before I go too far, I think I'm gonna go ahead and draw out where I want my windows so I don't have to wait for the brown to dry to put the yellow in my windows. I think I'm gonna go ahead and draw out where I want them. That way I can just fill them in with yellow. I just made an angry face. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to leave those. That way they'll be not, that black will be nice and dry and I can put yellow on there without waiting for um waiting for that black to dry. I don't know why I found that so funny. Sorry. Okay. So, let's go brown, a little bit of white. I right, go side to side. I'll put my door on here in a second vertically. That little bit of white in there is nice too because it, uh, it adds some little streaks like that. Woo. 
Ooh, too much white. What happens? Okay. Oh, that's fun. I'm taking my brown all the way out to the edge of the black. I'm covering that black completely. I do have a little bit of an outline, that's okay. But my goal here is not necessarily to see, um, to see the black. My black is just acting as a nice base for that brown to live upon. Okay. Here we go. Now I think I'm going to go ahead and maybe with a little bit of white, a little bit of brown and white, mark where my door is going to go. change my brush strokes vertical there. It's a little messy right now, but we know we're gonna do a little bit of detailing with the black and a couple little fine black lines will make a huge difference. So it's gonna look a little messy right now, but don't worry too much about it. Okay, we'll clean it up with those little black lines. Okay, now brown and a tiny bit of white. And I'm gonna go ahead and put my, put my walkway on here. And all of my brush strokes for my walkway need to be side to side. They need to be parallel to the bottom. I think you could add a little bit of black in this if you wanted. I love that it makes it look streaky, mostly brown little white, little black every now and then, but not much black. So mostly brown, little, little black, little white, side to side. I don't know about you guys, but tonight is very chill. I feel very relaxed tonight. Once I finally remembered to breathe, once I stopped holding my breath. That's just the stress of the week washing away, holding my breath. Go side to side. I love all those fun streaks of color in there. Makes it look like that old wooden path. I feel like they might take a little bit of that black and put some streaks in my door. Go, well, make my door a little more interesting. Okay. So we'll take a few more minutes on that. And then I'm gonna rinse my brush out. And with yellow and white, we're gonna put some light in our, our, uh, our windows. And I might even put a little bit of yellow, yellow white here in the peak of my um, treehouse roof. It looks like the, because the, um, 
the lights that are going across the whole painting, they swing right in front of that roof. And it's like glowing that, so that roof is glowing a little bit from those lights that go across. So I think I might do that. So I'm gonna take that brush. I think I'm gonna continue with my medium brush. You know what, I might go to a medium brush that's a little smaller. Clean it out, dry it off. And remember that yellow is gonna be very transparent by itself. So you're gonna have to add some white to it. So clean white to the yellow. They're about half and half. About 50% yellow, 50% white. And I'm gonna fill these windows in with that bright yellow. So it looks like we have friends staying in our, staying in our tree house. Oh, that's fun, fun, fun. It's always fun when we start to get to the detail in paintings, we start to get close to the end and we can kind of see how it's all coming together. Okay, I have a tiny bit of yellow white on my brush. And again, where those lights that we're gonna do last, where they swing across the whole canvas, they swing in front of this roof. So with that yellow and white, I'm gonna put just the littlest bit right there on that roof, almost dry brushing it. I don't have hardly any paint on my brush at all. Not hardly any paint on there. But I love the idea that we can see the glow of those lights across that roof, across that peak. Okay. And I know as we get close to the end of a painting, it always feels like I start to move fast, but it's all in the interest of time. So remember the details are all about whatever you wanna make of them. And again, if you feel I'm moving too fast, at this point, just pause, put your brushes in your water cup. And at about 9.05, I'll be able to have the Zoom, the Zoom link posted up so you can go back and finish, okay? So don't let me rush you, even though you feel like I might be moving fast, which I know I am. Okay, pointy brush with some black. Put some detail here on my on my tree house. Make this as detailed as you want. I'm gonna start by outlining those windows. I'm gonna give a little, a little plus inside those windows. Looks like little window panes. A little outline. a little plus. I'm going to outline my door up and around. My door has some uh, some little vertical lines in it to make it look like boards doorknob, you have to have a doorknob so you can get in, right? Boop. You could do some little horizontal lines, just some little broken horizontal lines on your, on your tree house that make it look like um, wooden slats or maybe logs. Define where the roof is. Oh, that's fun. 
I'm going to go ahead and outline my roof with some black. Again, you can spend as much time or as little time on this part as you want. Getting all kinds of fun details. Some little vertical lines on this roof. And the peak, I guess not the roof, but this peak. Oh, that's super cute. Okay, while I have black on my brush, I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna put Okay, just looking at comments. I know, Lynn, take your time. Keep working on your path. Because you can always come back to the video here in, in a few minutes. Okay, so I've got some detail there on my on my house. I'm I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go ahead. I wasn't sure I was going to, but I like the look with my pointy brush with black. I'm gonna swoop two strings of lights across it. That means I have to I have to paint black streaks across my painting. This is the Bob Ross moment of the evening where we have a beautiful painting that looks for all intents and purposes like it could be done. And then Bob would like lay this ginormous tree right in front of everything. And when he's doing it, you're always like, no. But then in the end, you're like, oh, right. So I'm going to do it. I'm committed to it. So I'm gonna start here. And I know I wanted to swoop across in front of my roof. That's why I have that yellow glow. So I'm gonna swoop here. I'm kind of mapping it out. I'm gonna do it. I'm just go and oh, that was tough. But I did it. And then this one, I'm going to come down a little bit and I'm going to swoop it. It's going to land across my path right there and come back up. Here we go. I'm just doing it. Do you hear me talking myself, talking myself up? I could, we can do this. Hey. Okay. It's a struggler. Okay. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put just a little hanger ever so often, just little down marks where I know I want my light bulbs to hang. They're probably every every maybe three-ish finger widths light bulbs. And the same with this, this line down here. This one's a little heavier, this line is, because it's a little closer to us. It's a little closer to the viewer. And this one doesn't have near as many lights that hang down, has about half as many. We'll hang down one, two, three, four, maybe one right there at the edge, five. Okay, I'm gonna let those dry. And now's the part that's gonna take the longest is the longest part to do is to put all those little fairy lights on there. And I think I'm gonna do that using the other end of my brush with yellow and white. And this is gonna take, this is gonna take some time. 
Well, let me show you all the places that we have those little fairy lights. So with white and yellow, mix in a little pile right here. White and yellow. I have fairy lights right here where the roof connects to the rest of the building. Little fairy lights that kind of hang down. They look like little icicle lights, like at Christmas time. Okay, so that's one spot. We have fairy lights that are covering these, this top cable. All the way down the, this, it looks like just the top cable. So go to town, putting fairy lights all over the top cable on both sides. I'm going to put some even up here, up like close to around my door. And if you look at the original painting, there are a ton, a ton of lights on this. Like that's what makes this so uh, so mythical, mystical, mystical maybe. It's all the little, all the little fairy lights. So go crazy, put all kinds of little lights on there. But it takes time. <laughs> oh, this is fun. All my little fairy lights. Again, around that top cable. Yellow and white. Remember, keep mixing white with your yellow. That yellow by itself is too transparent. So keep adding white with it. Okay. So there's my fairy lights. And then the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come back with my yellow and white and put my light bulbs and my hanging lanterns. Remember using yellow and white. So I think I'm gonna use I'm going to use a medium brush, one of my smaller medium brushes, I think, because I think I can do those in one swipe. Oh, for the fairy lights, I was using my small brush, but the other end of it. You could really use any brush you want, but I was using the handle to do all those little dot, dot, dots. Okay, so yellow and white. And with my, with one of my smaller brushes, I think I can just set it down and pull up and let go. Oh, that's nice. Get close. So I'm gonna set it down and turn and pull up and let go. The light, set it down and twist it up and let go. That's a nice little one brush stroke light there. I'm setting it down and twisting and turning and pulling up. Setting it down. Oh, fun.
And then these are gonna be little lanterns. So I'm doing like little, little square, little rectangles of light. And I can go back and put um, little black baskets around them. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna put little little crisscrosses on these to make them look like little little lanterns. Cute. Maybe a little vertical and two little sideways. Cute. You can put as much detail in here as you want. So you keep going, get creative, make this your own little space. But I think I've shown you all I know tonight. I feel like I wanna go back over that other, uh, that other cable and put fairy life down that cable too. I don't know, I feel like I need a lot more fairy lights. But that's something I can do. But I think I've shown you all I can show you tonight and it is nine o'clock. So as promised, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording. And here in about five minutes or so, I'll be able to post that up on, um, on the event page. I'll post it um, as a comment in the event page for tonight. So you can find the recording there. But I don't know that I'm going to sign mine because I'm not feeling done. I feel like I need a lot more fairy lights, especially on this path. I need a lot more on there. So I'm going to keep playing, I think. So I hope you keep playing too. You're done tonight. Come back to it tomorrow. Um, but keep playing, keep experimenting, keep doing what you do, right? Because this is how we learn. So when you are done, don't forget to sign your painting, right? Artists usually sign bottom left or bottom right. If you don't wanna sign on the front, that's okay. You can sign on the back, but if you sign on the back, sign where the wood is, not on the canvas. If you sign on the canvas with a Sharpie or a paint pen, it could bleed through to the front, okay? And that's not what we want. After putting all this work into it, you don't wanna sign your name and have it bleed through, okay? So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and stop the recording and then I'll give you the opportunity to unmute yourselves if you want. So I am Shauna Sue from Crooked Door Studio. This has been a lot of fun tonight, guys. Thank you so much for joining me. I've had fun. And I'll see you all next week for our Valentine's theme painting. All right, thanks.